created a digital analog clock. <laughs> so what that means is it's it functions like an analog clock, but it's it's set a kind of reference to a, a digital clock, like the same one that we created in experiment three. So um, the basic requirements: it should run and keep time along with the digital clock created in experiment three. Um, the user should be able to set the time and once the time is set, the analog clock will adjust to that time, and then um, the digital clock won't start keeping time until the analog clock has been set to the proper position so that they're synced up. Um, the numbers on the on the clock face, you can kind of see over there, they're not actually painted on there, they're actually cut out holes, and then behind them there's like an LED array, and so each, depending on what hour it is, that, that number will light up, so between Five and five fifty nine. The five should be lit up. Um, the digital clock should function identically to the one created in experiment three, except that it waits for the analog clock to catch up before it starts keeping time. And the user is able to set the time using the buttons, just like in the old thing. <laughs> uh, so this is our block diagram. Basically, from here over is like all the Nexus board, and the rest is just external stuff. So we have. Uh, four timers in our project because we have three servos, so um, three of the timers are set up with a pulse width modulation because that's how you control the timing of the servos. And then the other timer is just like the regular timer we use for the block project, which is half a second. And so um, we have GPIOs for the LCD uh, buttons, uh, and then we have one for a DMAX, which we use to control the LEDs. So we have four signals going out to that, and then um, that controls which of the 12 these go on, and um, and then for the office servos, we just have the gearing that goes to the hands of the clock, and then uh, the last part is the GPIO for we have magnetic switches on the clock face um, to tell where the hands are at each time because the servos don't have potentiometers on them because they're continuous rotation, so we have to have some sort of feedback to tell where the hands are, like whatever. And this is our system block diagram, the software diagram. So um, the clock, the digital clock, pretty much operates the same way as the other one. Um, but in addition, we have uh, a function called get status, which basically moves all the hands to the 12 o'clock position because that's where our magnets are. So from there, we can adjust the hands. Either initially we start keeping time from there, or when the user sets the time, presses the set button on the um, Nexus board, it then adjusts to the digital time and moves the hand accordingly and then starts keeping time again. And then it just gets stuck in that loop. So, um, it's got a lot of text here. Basically, <laughs> how it works is um, the, it, the system boots up and the hands all reset to that 12 o'clock position. And so basically, we just have them rotate until. We have these things called magnetic switches, and when there's when there's a magnet, you know, creating a field with that switch, it conducts like a normal switch would, and so you can tell when all our all the hands are lined up, and so from there, um, if, if nobody sets the time, then it just starts keeping time from 12 o'clock, and then you can um, manually set the time, and then tell it to go to that time, and it will reset again, and then go to that point, and then start keeping time from that point. Um, the, the hands are driven by continuous rotation servo motors, um, and they each drive a shaft. And so for the shaft, we needed to have the same axis of rotation, but they had to all be independently rotating. So we used a telescoping antenna, which is basically just like a normal antenna, um, and they cut out, cut it out into pieces so they fit inside one another. And then, um, so the servos are each connected to, to the three different shafts which control the three different hands. Um, I think that's about it. Um, some of the difficulties we had, um, we found out later on that the magnetic switches are extremely sensitive, so like even if one of us stands behind it sometimes, it throws it like triggers a switch. And so one of the hands will, especially when it's setting the time initially, or when you're setting the time, it'll think that maybe the second hands at the twelve o'clock position email is at twenty-five seconds. So that's something we couldn't really figure out. I don't know. We didn't really know what it's caused by. Um, that and uh, we originally were using a, a 
battery pack is the power supply, but the servo is a really sensitive voltage too, like the speed. So it, we set the timing, and then as the battery like drained, even though it was like millivolts, it would still change the timing a good amount, like at least for a clock. And then also we found out that the LEDs we bought aren't very bright, <laughs> so <laughs> we did a, spent a good amount of time wiring those up, and they don't light up back like we thought they're going to. Yeah, um, so basically, um, unfortunately, so we use, we use the, um, the timer counters um, with the PWM output to control the servo motors. And so unfortunately, like, a, a linear change in the PWM doesn't correspond to a linear change in the servo speed. So it was really just testing, like, all right, it's not going fast enough, add another, you know, 100,000 or whatever to the wait time or something like that. So. That took a long time to get all the hands working properly. And then um, we also initially we just had, like, so if it, if it was 6.30, we'd have the hour hand rotate to 6. And then the, you know, the minute hand rotate to, to 6, too, because that would be 6.30. But actually, on a real clock, the hour hand should be, like, halfway in between the 6 and 7. So we had to adjust that so it would add a little extra juice, depending on the minutes. Do you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what time? Oh, yeah. So right now it's like initially setting all the hands to 12, um, so that way you can kind of get a base starting point as where or to where it's going to start. And the reason they're like off center at first is because the magnetic switches trigger early, so then we have to add a little bit extra. And so now the second hand is going to go around. And the minute, ha minute hand, which is the gray one, increases, it ticks every 15 seconds. And then the hour hand ticks every um, three minutes. And so that, that's why we did you it. You can so kind of see if you look around the LEDs inside the 12. Oh, I can see it right yeah. here. But it's not as bright as we'd like it to be. So I don't know, let's change the time to uh, let's see, four, uh, 4.45, I guess. It'll go back to 12 again, and then it'll figure out, since it's going to 445, it'll figure out which way each hand needs to go to be the fastest set. So the hour hand goes first, and now we go to 445. And then the, the minute hand's going to go the other way because it's faster to go to 45. And the second hand also goes back to whatever seconds it was at as well. And then it'll just keep, keep on increasing from there. So, yeah. That's pretty much it, I guess. I think we had to go through a great deal of time to get this thing calibrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> it was still safe for the reason. <laughs> it was quite frustrating when we were using the battery pack at first because we sat there for like a couple hours resetting everything like yeah. constantly. And so you can see like the magnetic switches, there's one that corresponds to each hand. So like the magnets are at different points so that they all line up. And then uh, it's a, it's like on 4 o'clock right now, so if you kind of peek around you can see it's lit up. Um, and then I guess that's a pretty good demonstration, right? And then you guys can check out back here, we've got some cool action. Oops. So. Travis went home over Thanksgiving and built this awesome servo setup <laughs> that uh, miraculously just makes all the hands move really well. And then um, his family missed them. We have, <laughs> have all the so these are like the LED boxes. So they you know they show up black. That we spray painted them black, so they show up black until you light them up. Um, and then here's that demultiplexer that we were talking about. So that controls which of these sets of LEDs gets fed the six volts from the supply. And then the servos are also run off the 6-volt supply, but all the, all the control signals and stuff run off the 3.3 volts from the Nexus board.